Good morning, fellow privateers. Give me a second here. I'm just making sure that this thing is recording. It is indeed. All right. I'm giving you a midweek update. It's Wednesday, well, Thursday, your time. Figured I'd uh, touch base after the. Uh, mouse back after the uh, FOMC meeting. See, uh, I think you, some of you have seen some of my tweets. You know, basically, we were looking to sell risk rallies. We expected the Fed to be uh, less dovish than the market was pricing in today, and uh, we got it pretty wrong. So we scrambled to get out of some short risk positions, uh, these S&P puts and um, a few other short risk positions. Did an okay job of cutting it. Thankfully, we had some gold longs to help offset because gold went up as the dollar sold off. And um, so the damage was, was minimal. But you know now we are at a, an interesting crossroads and we need to start thinking about, you know, some kind of multi-week type trade ideas. Um, Chinese PMI figures coming up shortly. Estimate for January, manufacturing BMI is 49.3, non-manufacturing BMI 53.8. Composite BMI was previously 52.6. The dollar index uh, looks very important. It's a fractal. It's the lowest we've been in a long time. We have an old low here. We have this kind of false break down here to 9480. Um, but I think the narrative has changed quite a bit. Um, as I said in the tweet, you know, Jerome Powell surprised a lot of participants today in his dovishness. And we are, you know, the question that I'll post all of you viewers is do we are we supposed to now flip from a kind of sell risk rallies to buy risk dips and to, do we start selling the dollar now um, you can see here today the low in the dollar index is also the uh, 200 day moving average realize that until I'm just this is why this is why we do these videos is because we you know it makes us do our homework it makes us do our chart work um, you know we spend 80% of our day either looking at charts or reading fundamental analysis on the um, you know on the on our the markets that we're following and you know this is interesting how we went right to the 200 day moving average. So I'm taking notes right now. Um, 200 day in the dollar index is 9524. Set your alerts there. Um, you know, if we pop over to the euro, which is the, you know, the, the most heavily weighted of the dollar index, we got right up to this FIBO. We scalped some sales against that went back down to 80, but it, it's bit. There's no doubt about it. And I'm starting to think that if we can take out this 115 area on a closing basis, especially on the week, and we, and we do have NFP coming up on Friday, especially on the week, um, let me get this, let me get to a weekly chart here just to show some projections and targets. Um, if we start we're, if we close a week above 115, we're, we're certainly going to take out this 115.70 area. And, you know, what we need to do now is um, we can draw some retracements um, from these old highs. We don't have to go that, that far. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start right here, which is like the September high. Because that was that's the most recent swing. It's a pretty big swing. I mean, it's you know it's a five-month swing or so. 
see how we spiked up here 115 89 to two-thirds this looks like it can go I think we can go back and retest this 118 um, area so you know we bought some call spreads 49.5 China's uh, manufacturing PMI 49.5 services PMI 54.7 composite PMI 53.2 up from previous 52.6 China PMI China's is out January right now. manufacturing BMI 49.5 against uh, estimate of 49.3. Non manufacturing BMI 54.7 against estimate of 53.8. So it looks like the China data is coming out and it's, it's stronger than expected, which is going to um, bear with me one second. Dollar China is getting hit a little bit. Aussie dollar is rallying just a tad. Give me one second here. I clicked on something on accident. So now I'm scrambling to get out of it. Somehow I sold NASDAQ futures. No idea how that happened. Anyhow, that's what happens when you're doing a video. But so, you know, here's some um, China data came out. It's better than expected. Um, you have a, an ex what I'm saying is an extremely dovish sounding Fed. Like, I'm worried, you know, more medium term, I'm worried, what do they know that we don't know? Um, so it's something to keep in the, you know, the kind of in the back of our minds is they're dovish for a reason. Um, you know, equities, the S&Ps are close to 2,700 again. You know, we're, we're trying to retrace, and why don't we pop over to the equity chart? But before we do that, so anyhow, uh, the dollar came under pressure. Let's take a look at dollar again, real quick. Uh, we'll go to the daily uh, and the hourly here. So we've got these two charts up. So you see what over here on the left chart, dollar yen went from 109.50 all the way down to 108, um, 108.80. And if you look at the S&P chart during that same time period, S&Ps were rallying. So generally, um, you're seeing, you would see yen crosses rally, uh, which they did a bit because of, you know, the other, the other uh, numerators were, were rallying. But the um, dollar yen got hammered, and that 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 hurt some of some of the guys in our group where we were looking, you know, we were watching stocks rally. We thought dollar yen would rally with cross yen and dollar yen just got clobbered. It, it literally just turned into a, um, it turned into a uh, straight dollar sell-off. So that to me is important that we had a big equity rally on the dovish Powell but dollar yen actually shit the bed yeah, along with the other dollars. So I do think we're, you know, kind of on the cusp of something a little bit bigger. You can see here in the daily dollar yen, we had a big uh, bearish engulfing day. Uh, I, I think this can retrace down to these lows of 107.50 probably by Friday. Now we have the non-farm payrolls on Friday, which makes things a little bit tricky um, and I've been thinking what happens if we have like a you know if we beat on the NFP number you know, strong NFP and what happens if we have a strong a uh, big jump in wages so what would that do to the move that we've seen today which is you know obviously a dovish narrative from the Fed, but what would that do if we had like kind of a hot wage number coupled with a strong jobs number and Powell at the end of his, at the end of the, this whole testimony today in the Q&A said we are, you know, they're focused on Main Street, i.e. job growth, job creation, 
and not Wall Street. That is the most, that is such fucking bullshit because, and I, have, I didn't tweet this, but I was thinking about it earlier. He caved. Jerome Powell, who we thought was going to be different than Yellen, than Bernanke, than all these other fucking monkeys that have been in charge of the Federal Reserve, he caved to Trump. Did Trump threaten him with a you know, video with in Asian efforts, his Indonesian rupiah is rising. I don't know what it was. Now up 0.7% against the dollar. He is not Thai an independent Fed. He is not higher. a leader. Korean won is up 0.3%. Dollar yen now trading um, at 108.99. And I think yen is up 0.1%. You know, Aussie dollar was a at 72.55. Also 0.1% How can you be this dovish? Higher. S&Ps were at 26.50 when he came out speaking. They're off the lows of 23 and change on the, you know, Christmas Eve massacre. It's not that we're, we're at high levels. We're 150 handles from the all-time highs, and we're, you know, up 8% this, this month, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. So clearly Trump has something on him as a conspiracy theorist, but... Um, you know, it's frustrating if you're trying to you're trying to trade in public markets. You're trying to trade in a, uh, an environment that um, fundamentals actually matter, and yet Powell and the Fed were uber dovish today. So I think the you know the weak side of, the weak side right now is um, you know a lower dollar and higher risk, and you know we'll ride that wave. Um, you know, if that's the case for the next couple of weeks to a month, and and we still have the China uh, trade negotiations, and I think that's kind of on the back burner because they're going to be coming to the U.S. with different delegates to um, negotiate different deals. But let's take a look at Dollar China. Speaking of which, because that thing is now below the 200-day moving average, and we are hanging around this 670 area that the that the Bank of China has basically defended forever. Um, you know, pretty big time move lower. If this area goes here, euro will be 118 bit in a heartbeat. So just keep an eye on dollar China. Um, you know, the Fed blinked today, the Powell put is on. Um, gold that we have some um, interest in being long, we're long of that silver I think is about to break out and silver can go completely mental to the top side um, you know, here's an hourly gold chart on the left left hand uh, chart it's getting up into big resistance this uh, 1325 area is pretty big so we hedged up some of our calls but you know, this looks like it can go higher. 1350 is the next target um, in gold. Silver, <coughs> a lower today, but you can see how silver, somewhere around 16, $16. This has targets of kind of 1630 to 1650. And then back to the currencies. Sorry, this is getting a little longer than I thought, but stuff is moving around quite a bit right now, so I'm slightly distracted. Um, Sterling Young looks interesting. Uh, let's look at the left chart. Let's look at the hourly. There we are. See my horizontal here? That's a big fucking level. 142.70 we'll call it. I'm not even sure what this formation is. You know, like some goofy looking quadruple head and shoulders. I mean, Here's a shoulder, here's a head, here's a shoulder. Go to the left, here's a shoulder-ish head. Weird W formation, I don't know what you want to call it. Bottom line is, if for some reason risk starts selling off, or if there is a um, Brexit headline, negative Brexit headline, which we know could happen at any time, this looks like a pretty good break trade to me. And I would think that we can get back to these old... You know, it's probably a, let's 
go to the daily. I'm going to go daily. Here's the daily. Here's the horizontal. There's an old high here at 142.20. First stop there. You have this big outside reversal bar right here, this green one. Um, where are my inside days, by the way, in this thing? Anyhow. So I could see it getting down to 140.65, which is also a fractal day. I had these inside. I had the, these inside bars drawn, but I don't know what's going on with that. Um, what else are we looking at? Dollar China. Dollar CAD's interesting. Let's look at that. Everyone's getting better. City, city, uh, city technicals. Who are I'm not a huge fan of. We got down to the 200 day, which comes in at 131.16 today. Had a pretty massive move down, and you know once we broke this 130, 180, that was a clean break after the Fed. Then we have another fractal down here, 13160. Another one here, 13130. There's a bunch of stuff down there. Um, let's pop over to Kiwi. We're trading 69, to 69 cents right now. Um, this looks like it can probably go back up to this old high. You know, and the thing with FX, when you have FX vol as low as it is, it's really difficult to put a position on and keep it for a couple days because most of these trades, most of these moves are one day wonders. I think with the Fed today sounding very dovish. You know, maybe maybe they know something about the economic data that you know we've missed over the um, past couple of weeks with the shutdown. Maybe they know something that we don't, and hence the you know the extreme dovishness. Because again, they caught us by complete surprise. And I think most participants were expecting to be kind of a this this meeting, the January meeting. Most January meetings are just complete non-events. Um, anyhow, been rambling too long. Um, you kind of get what we're we're thinking. We are, you know, we're we're gonna we're, we're kind of just kind of roll with the, you know, the dovishness and the weaker dollar narrative until something else changes. Um, the trades, the trade stuff. With China, I think is a non-event the rest of the week because they're going to be sending more delegates in the, over the next couple of weeks. So I think all of that's on hold. Anyhow, good luck, and uh, we will—you'll hear from us tomorrow morning on the European Open. Cheers.